Soggy in the six. Thanks, Frankie. So, when you go to a restaurant, did you know that they are tricking you? Well, how are they dipping me now? Eating you, eat, eating more. <laughs> so there's a few things about restaurant psychology that have come out, and it, it, this is going to be if you own a restaurant, this is going to be nothing for you. You're going to know all this, but. Or it might help your restaurant if you don't know. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So first off, you rarely see a restaurant with a dollar sign on it. And that is because you don't want, at, you know, like dollar stores, you, have, you see it all the time. But when someone sees a dollar sign next to a restaurant, they, they see it as sort of like, a, oh, no, I have to go and it's spend too pricey. Money. Well, even yeah. all the menus now, it'll just be a number. Like, let's say it says appetizer 14 exactly. or 16, and it'll have a dash as opposed to a dollar sign. So I was out not... for brunch yesterday. My friend's like, I'll, ha I'll have order 19. He's like, right? no, no, sorry, sir, that's the price. Because the they price. don't use the dollar sign yes. anymore. Yes, yes. So, yeah. It's so true. Hi, Rob. <laughs> uh, the second thing is they connect connecting food to family. So this is really important. Customers are especially drawn to names of relatives such as parents and grandparents on menus. For example, people are more likely to buy grandma's warm homemade cookies yes. or Aunt Margot's famous potato salad. It's so true. When they're like, you know, the, the nana made the lasagna of the day, you're like, well, I have to eat the lasagna. I've not made it, and you think it's going to be so much more authentic, mm. right? And you picked your nun in the kitchen. Yeah, and it's really just Ralph back there. It's probably you know. just yeah, Ralph. <laughs> uh, Ralph's great too. Music to set the mood. I love this one because it. This is what makes us, I think, feel so cultured. It's like, oh, I went into a little Italian restaurant, authentic. and they were playing old Italian music, and I thought, wow, I'm really. It's like a taste of Italy. It's like I'm really. There. And again, it's owned by Ralph in the back. <laughs> um, playing classical music in restaurants encourages diners to spend more, believe it or not, and be, uh, because it makes them feel a little bit more affluent. You know what? That is so true. Don't you find that? You feel like you're sitting down to a rustic meal. Yes. If you hear, like, whether you be in a Middle Eastern restaurant or whether it be for dim sum somewhere, like you said, Italian. It puts you... Um, Takes you there. Yeah, and it, it puts you at ease a little bit, right? Yeah. And almost, it's like, it feels like a mini vacation, which is the whole point of going out anyway. Yeah. And um, you know who else does that well is Disney with Epcot Center. You feel like you've been around the world. Yes. By the time you're done going, the landscape, they get down, like, every detail is flushed out, you know? They are so detailed. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. A couple more things, and one of them involves Winston. Uh, oh. Of course, because he's our resident foodie. He's our foodie. But the first thing before we get to Winston is big steak knives. If you order a big steak, or, or they, you order a steak at all, they want to put a big knife next to it. Prime cut. Makes it look good. Like, I'm getting the good stuff because I need the big, <laughs> I need the the big, big boy knife. steak. Bringing out the big knives for this one. <laughs> and then lastly, we're going to have a look at Winston's dessert from this weekend. Oh. Winston, where were you? Where did you go? Uh, I went out with Pay and my friend Emily uh, to Pizzeria Libretto. And oh, that was I love dessert. Their pizza. I just took a so picture. Good. I'm like, great way to end the weekend. But it, that was the tiramisu on the left. And then the sphingy, which are like little donut holes that they fry up. Sphingy. Also yeah. round. <laughs> And they put them on a plate there, so that was our dessert. And you um, know what? When they put it in a bowl like that, you feel like you're eating something elevated, or like it's in that beautiful cup or in a circle. It's oh, your it's own. Fancier. It's the same thing with with pizza too, right? Like when you get your own little personal pizza, it feels elevated. It feels like your own and personalized yes. versus getting a piece of a large pizza. Well, it's, it's funny interesting you that you say, say that, that too. Yeah. Because it's the circle desserts that people are willing to pay more for. You feel so like the dessert that you got, the tiramisu, has it's because it's circular. Because at home we can't cut yeah. in a circle. Right? Or the donuts rather than like your traditional donut because it's all like glazed as it is. You're like, oh, I'll pay more. It's an Little elevated donut. Size. And you know sauce. what, too? It was very smart that, uh, that you mentioned that with the personalized thing because the, the uh, feature last night was yeah. Nona's lasagna. See? It was, it was mm. again, personalized, brings it back to the family thing. I don't know if I agree with the music piece, though. Why? Really? I don't know. I don't really listen. To, I don't pay attention to the music unless Do it's like know? a live band. Oh, I do. I listen to the music. If there is music, first of all, that's always a bonus because it's more inviting. If it's too loud, there's a place. Uh, you guys probably know it on Queen. I forget the name of it now. Electric something or other? Electric Mud. Uh, or Grand uh, Electric. Mexican. Grand Electric. Grand Electric. Alex and I, we're like, we're old. It was about, <laughs> I don't know, like 1.30 on a Thursday. We walk in. <laughs> How are people talking over this? Right back out. Right like back out. Like how Abercrombie used to be. You'd walk in and it would be like. It was so loud. You guys want to buy a t-shirt? <laughs> no, but you could feel the base. The yeah. base. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, but they're eating. They're yeah. eating. How are they talking? Are we at a club? Is it, is it midnight? Anyway, I actually said to the waitress, how do you all manage here? And she's like, oh, we get used to it. I'm like, but how do people eat over this? Like, literally, I, was, I couldn't get. And I'm like, maybe just take it down a little. So we left because it was too loud. How do you eat when it's that loud? So, so you know, music, but at a decent level. I'd You're say. there. You I'm made there. It. You're, you're at that point yep. now. Winston, she's there. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I, mean, I can agree. I can That's agree. Right. Sometimes it is a little loud, but then you just deal with it. TK, you agree? Yeah, I totally agree with you. 
You're done Thank with the loud you. music? I had to leave a place also because it was loud. Thank you. Really? So Sorry. either we're just that age or you know what, guys, just take note. If you want us to, to hang out at your place, we need to we want to be able to talk to the people we're there with because we actually like them. Yeah. That's a novel Wait, idea. But then what is want it? a Caesar? <laughs> Caesar salad. <laughs> Woo! What does it mean then if they keep the music loud, then they don't want us there? Yeah. That's how they do a high turnover rate, maybe. There you go. I don't know. Maybe those places are good for first dates, too, because you're, you're <laughs> awkward and you don't know what to talk about. The music kind of fills in the awkward pauses. No, no? I'm going to say again no? the opposite. Like, no? you want something in the background, but you want to be able to hear the people that you're with. Another thing when it's so dark that you can't even read the menu. Yes. And it's like, but I want to yeah. see the food. I understand the need for... You know, ambiance and everything. Like, you want to see the menu, you want to be able to see the food. It's that fine balance. It's so hard to get right. And you need to put it on Instagram for the likes. By the likes way, for the gram. speaking of, um, an astute viewer found one of Adam's old posts. Oh, no. And sent me, no. I'd like to give a shout out to Jill Jackson. And we have found, you know how Frankie was mentioning those days, uh, your, your hair flow? Yeah, this is my hair. I, can, is, I can't even, I, this is you. That's not even at its longest, but yes, this is me. This is Adam Wildchild when he was fronting a band, which he will not tell us the I name of. I was 17. Who's the, har who's the hunky heartthrob? Oh, not me, the other guys in the band, maybe. Adam Wildchild. <laughs> We're yeah. going to see if we can resurrect this band for the Molly. summer. You need to find that missing player, though. We'll be back with more Big T right after this. Smooth sounds to get us out this morning. Right. Up to loud. I do.